Come up here, isn't it? On your right, sir. Mind the barbed wire. That's set. I want to see Captain Thornby. <coughs> Have you an appointment, sir? That's right. Will you fill up that glass, please? Right. Is that Captain Thornby? Uh, it's a moral to see you, sir. I'll bring him up at once. Will you please come this way, sir? Countrymen, that we need immediate help. Aid for Britain. I thought you're pretty well sold on that idea already. Now, can't you impress on them the tremendous task of our Navy? Why, there's hardly a sea in the world, except those controlled by America, that we don't have to look after every minute of every day throughout the year. And that's why we need help and need it now. So, Mr. Morrow, I'm going to give you every assistance so that you can tell the full story. Now, look at that map. Almost any day, you may come down to this old, gray, smoke-stained Admiralty building and ask for news of the Navy. The answer generally is, the Navy is at sea. When France collapsed, the Navy's work was doubled. The Western Mediterranean fleet, based on Gibraltar, was reinforced. Battleships swept the Mediterranean, hoping to bring the Italian fleet to action. Searching for Mussolini's ships that were built for action in these waters. The Italians generally won the boat race. The Royal Navy moved freely from Gibraltar to Alexandria. General Wavell wanted reinforcements for his whirlwind campaign in the western desert. That meant more troop ships, more cruisers and destroyers to protect them. The big transports passed through Suez Canal in Indian file and came alongside at Alexandria. The big lean Australians looked forward to a fight. In that campaign along the coast, the Navy acted as Wavell's heavy artillery. The 15-inch guns threw their salvos against the Italian positions around Bardia. But the Mediterranean is only one of many seas plowed by British warships. The Atlantic fleet is out on patrol in all weathers. In the Arctic waters, the Navy's patrol blocks the northern approach to Germany's back door. Pancake ice is the sailor's name for this picturesque formation. In the next stage, the sea freezes solid. On the northern patrol, it's below zero six months of the year.
there is always a strong fleet in the North Sea. For these waters may be the scene of another Jutland, but a different kind of Jutland, in which bombers may at any moment test their full strength against surface craft. There is no relaxation for the men on duty, above deck or in the engine room in the North Sea. <laughs> As minesweepers, hundreds of rusty little trawlers have joined the Navy, manned for the most part by crews who were fishermen in the days of peace. Britain will never repay her debt to the sailors of this little fleet. There was no glorious battle for the minesweepers, no headlines, little recognition. They handled the sweep and the hundreds of yards of steel cable that cut through the water like a knife to hack the mines loose from their anchors, just as casually as though they were paying out cable on their own trawls. The lookout sings out the moment a mine breaks surface, and rifle fire does the rest. While the trawlers swept up the mines, destroyers shepherded the convoys in and hunted submarines. Aircraft of the Coastal Command kept watch from above, and when they sighted a submarine, flashed a signal giving its position down to the destroyer. The U-boat's position is worked out with the precision of a classroom exercise, and the men down below in the engine room squeeze the last ounce of power out of their engines. Bring the death charge for Red Ed. sweepers and the destroyers have brought another convoy safe to port. There is more food to feed this island, more American planes to defend it. As soon as the merchant ships have discharged their cargoes, they must put to sea again. Nerve center of the whole system of convoy control is the underground wireless room in the Admiralty. From there, code messages go out to British men of war at sea, and instructions are sent to merchantmen, informing them where they must assemble to join outward-bound convoys. The wireless operator in London pounds out a signal to the Greyfriars, waiting for orders at Yarmouth. to sea flying the Red Ensign, the old red duster of Britain's merchant navy. There isn't much formality on these vessels. Nobody bothers about uniforms. It's much more important that the guns should be clean and ready for work. The 12-pounder might be useful against either submarines or aircraft. There's an expert gunner aboard to fight it. The old 
old Lewis gun gets a bit of polishing too. So I said to my missus, I said to her, your idea of a convoy is that of the destroyers tearing up and down on each side of us. That's what they're all think. My God, there's a jerry. Many planes have been shot down by Lewis guns, you know, Captain. Yes, I know, sir, and uh, also the rifle. You had one seaman killed and the mate wounded. Ah, uh, one fireman killed too, sir. We are very sorry you lost your ship, Captain, and we think you put up a very fine fight. Yes, with the hell of it is, sir, that those two men should be alive today and my ship should be afloat. What do you mean, Captain? You've got a good anti-aircraft gun and you're sitting tight on it. I can assure you, Captain, that if we had those guns, we wouldn't let our ship go to sea without them. Believe me, we are doing everything we can to get every single ship fitted. Give us that gun, sir, and we'll beat them off every time. This gun, known as the Ehrlichan, is now being made in this country as well as in America. Those walls crossing the floor are blast walls. If a bomb comes through the roof, they can find the damage and the death roll to just one section of the works. As more and more men are called up, women are trained to take their places. Now this is the, one of the latest types of American milling machines. Now this is one of the machines that you will be taught to work. Make sure everything you do is correctly and properly done. One error might cost a man's life. The shop steward told me what organized labor thinks about it. Ever since the last war, our unions have fought against unskilled labor. Today, we welcome all the trainees they can find. Mrs. Loder is 45. She has a son in the merchant service from whom she hasn't heard for 13 weeks. The machines never stop, not even at tea time. Tea and buns, one eye on the little lump of rationed sugar and the other on the drill. Ships are waiting for these guns. There's no time to lose. Half the people at this plant have brothers, fathers, sons or sweethearts afloat. When the night shift arrives, the machines keep turning. No quitting whistle ever sounds here. 
The lathes and drills will run 24 hours a day until they break down or wear out. These men and women will continue to make these guns, assemble them, and send them down to the ports. But the stream is too slow and too small. They know it. The Admiralty knows it. And the merchant skippers who report the sinking of their ships, they know it too. They're looking out across the Atlantic, hoping to see those guns come pouring out of American factories, where there are no blast walls, no rationing, no blackout. When the guns come, the men are here to use them. Men of the Greyfriars are afloat again. You see, a damn devil is being thrusting on me like that. Well, look here, look here. The gun, the gun. Why the hell didn't you say that before? the difference between what they had and what they have now. Those little machine gun bullets won't reach high enough or hit hard enough. But the shell of the Ehrlichan has both the range and the power, and it explodes on contact. This vessel has a far better chance than the Greyfriars had of making port. The very life of Britain depends on the convoys coming through. Side of the jerry. He's out of bolster. I doubt if we ever shall. Enemy flying suit! Action station! Convoys carry the hopes of Britain. They bring food, men, guns, and planes into this island. The very life of Britain depends upon the convoys coming through. The western approaches have been the graveyard of many proud ships and brave men. Many have been lost for the lack of guns. The men who sail in Britain's merchant navy are defending their homes. They face the threat of submarine, mine, surface raider, and bomber. You have promised to help them by sending the guns to make every ship a warship. They need those guns, and they need them right now. <laughs> <laughs> 